Hello and welcome to Heart to Heart. I'm so glad you could join me on another inspiring edition of the program. Have you ever been at a point in your life where all you have spent your time and life to build come crashing down like a pack of cards? Or are you at a point in your life where nothing seems to be working and all around you are negative reports? Everything seems to be getting out of control. Everyone has given up on you and all you need is a miracle. Here is something to put a smile on your face. I got tired of everything. I got tired of drugs, I got tired of girls. Nothing was working. Everything I tried to do wasn't working. Nothing was working. And at that point in time, I knew I needed something more superior. I just needed peace by all means. So I knelt down in my bedroom. Nobody was there. No pastor was there. And I prayed, God, help me. I need peace. I don't even want money anymore. At that time, it was Jesus that showed up and gave me peace. And that day, you won't believe it, I read the book of Ecclesiastes from chapter 1 to 12, five times. And I saw the emptiness of this life. My fulfillment does not come from my achievement. It comes from the very idea that I represent something every day. Everything I do is expanding God's kingdom. That is my goal as much as I can. And I have a heaven to go, very important. And nothing must change that for me. I'm sure that was soothing. Let Jesus soothe all your hurt and pain today. He's the only one who knows just how you feel. He said in the book of Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, I am the Lord who heals you. Let him heal every hurt and pain in your life. Don't go away, because when we come back, you'll meet a woman with an amazing story you don't want to miss. Rita Alakija, popularly known as Amy, is a quiet, gentle, and soft-spoken lady. But when it comes to music, she is an entirely different person. She has got two music albums, Lost Without You and So Grateful to Her Credit, with songs like Olua Momi and Soldiers. She continues to be an inspiration to so many with a mandate from God to go teach his people worship. But it wasn't always like this, as Amy had an entirely different life. As a young lady climbing up the corporate ladder of her career, Amy moved from the aviation sector to broadcasting, then the financial sector where she headed two departments. For Amy, there was no stopping her as she rose to the top of her career. She had everything going for her. Amy was an example of Philippians 4.13 which says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Until a debilitating illness ravaged her body. She was in and out of hospital seeking medical attention. But the more she treated, the more her condition worsened. Gradually, her system started shutting down. She was in constant pain. Her doctors couldn't help her. They gave up on her. They said she had 99% chance of dying. Join me as I welcome Amy. Amy, it's so good to have you in the studio. Thank you for having me. Thank you for taking our time to share your testimony with us. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, now about nine years ago, you went through what I'll call the valley of shadow of death. Can you tell me more about that experience? Everything was okay, one second, and then some, um, before I knew what was happening, I wasn't feeling fine. I was having issues with everything, and I kept going to do tests, and one um, diagnostic center will say something else, another doctor will say something else, until 2007 when I got home from work and I, I collapsed from pain. I couldn't talk, I couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything. Okay, so when you got to the hospital, what was the doctor's diagnosis of what was wrong with you? 
They really knew what was wrong with me because everything was wrong with me. From one thing, um, it led to another thing and led to another thing. And um, by the time I take account, uh, we're talking about like 15 medical challenges I had to live with. And I, I became what I call a vegetable and I had to be helped to, um, to do basic things people do in life to be cleaned up, to be up, to be, you know, generally everything. And I lost my job um, and it kept dragging and they kept changing treatment. I had wonderful caregivers. Um, I had wonderful doctors in and out of the country and I thank God for them. But it just got worse. And um, at the end of the day, um, I was told I would um, live, I will die a slow, painful death. Yeah. Now, when you discovered that the doctor said you were battling with about 15 medical conditions, what was going through your mind at that time? What went through my mind was, God, I'm going to get healed. And all around me was the positive, you know, atmosphere. And, and that's so important for someone who's going through, it might be an issue of blood, it might be any issue, financial issue, children issue, whatever the issue is. If you surround yourself with the right atmosphere, the word of God and faith, there will be miracles. I remembered you saying something about the day you went out and you were bleeding <laughs> out, linking it to when you talked about yourself being like the modern day woman with the issue of blood. Can you tell me what happened that day? Um, so this day I had to go out and a friend took me out and um, we stayed a bit too long. And um, by the time we got home, I was so embarrassed. Um, hair was smelly um, and I like to look good and feel good about myself. And here I was totally helpless and my Underwear, everything was in blood. All the um, protection I had put um, didn't work. It just sipped through and was just sipping through to <laughs> the, the seat of the car. And I got down from the car and um, I looked back and it was just, the blood was just gushing down my legs. Wow. And I wonder what the woman, the issue of blood. She must have gone through plenty of pain. She wouldn't have been able to stand up. She wouldn't have been strong. She would have been frail. She wouldn't have been smelling good. She would have been fighting infections. She would have, she, so she was really desperate for her to say, if I just touch the hem of his garment, so I understand her desperation. I used to be someone you can't give me injection, even if I had malaria, <laughs> I'd run away. And now I had to inject my ties or my arms or my um, bottom. And that pain was nothing compared to what I was going through. And um, that was it. So when I got a glimpse of heaven three times, Hmm. I don't want to tell you what I was thinking. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. But before then, in the midst of this intense pain, you still went into the studio. You came out <laughs> with your first album, Lost Without You, where you had a couple of songs. You had Good, Good. You had Olua Mommy. Where did that strength come from? It came you? from God. <laughs> it came because from I know, God. I know the intensity of studio sessions and rehearsals. How were you able to manage all that? Well, it got to a point where the Lord told me, he said, I want my people to love me for who I am and not just because of the blessings they get from my hand. I want you to teach my people worship. I obeyed him with the help of my wonderful family, my wonderful brother, um, I'll be so in intense pain crying. And he will tell me, I'm praying for you. In two hours, we're going to the studio. And um, he'll be, he'll fast for me. Seriously. He'll fast for me. He'll do everything. My mom, my sister, wonderful caregivers. And they were just like, you know, my strength, and he would come and uh, put me in the car 
virtually um, lift me up, put me in the car, and uh, we'll go, we'll start singing. I didn't even know the people who did the backup. I just come to lay my voice, and they're counting, oh, before the pain starts again. And if I'm caught with that pain, the session is over. I'll have to stop and take my pain relief and do my crying and then get better. And then he'll take me back home before um, things <laughs> get really bad. I remember one of my, my caregivers, she said, um, you're not supposed to be walking up and down. That's an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. They're my friends. <laughs> you're not supposed, wonderful caregivers. You're not supposed to be walking up and down. I don't understand <laughs> it, but whatever God you're serving, keep serving the God. And that's a testimony mm. to say that our God reigns yeah. and he's a healer. And in the midst of this, you did Olua, Mommy. Can you tell me how your experiences were reflected in that song? Olua, Mommy is the Yoruba dialect. It says, uh, it says Lord, mold me you are the porter and i'm the clay so it was a period of um, absolute submission and still loving jesus in spite of everything it was like there was nowhere to go where else everything about god is extreme is either god or the devil the moment you stop believing god you automatically have believed the devil okay. so i come before his throne of grace to obtain mercy and find help in time of need. Wow. Amy was in and out of hospitals, and at the time, some of the doctors rejected her because they couldn't help her anymore. Find out more about Amy's road to recovery after the break. Welcome back to Heart to Heart. We've been talking with Amy and how what seemed to be just a minor ailment grew to become life-threatening and how in the midst of it all, Jesus was talking to her. Amy, you said in the midst of all this pain, you heard the voice of God telling you that if I don't heal you, would you still love me? <laughs> you said that some time ago. Yes, I did. I knew he would heal me, but he just wanted to say, what if I didn't? Because the word, of course, talks about our healing. That's why he died, because he knows there'll be times in our lives when we'll need healing, when we'll need provision, when we'll need protection. That's why Jesus died. My healing wasn't something like um, um, someone just prayed and I just got up. It was a process of trusting God and him removing the grave clothes gradually. The medical team had to meet to decide what to do with me. Do we let this lady go and have a slow painful death or do we take a surgery do a surgery that we know she has one percent chance of leaving and my mom said you will leave and not die and i will scream and throw things i'd lost my mind i'd become a mad person and um they had to get me a psychiatrist because they said i became suicidal wow. for pain and the illness i never knew there would come a time in my christian faith where i'll say Lord, why are you keeping me alive? But I'm so thankful he didn't listen to that prayer because um, I'm alive today. Amen. And um, it's been a slow process. Precept by precept, he healed me. And here I am today. Okay, so what happened when they carried out the surgery? When uh, they were having the surgery was about five hours plus. They said um, it was like a presence walked into the room. I know that presence. I know him. He's my father. His name is called Jesus, mm -hmm. and he's the almighty God, the God above all gods. And um, they said what they had, all the prognosis, all they had seen, all the tests, they got in there, and it was something else. They were expecting to cut and hack and cut the intestines and damage the bladder. And um, so I had several doctors on the team to handle this, handle that. That, w that didn't happen, and I was expected to um, not recover, but die. And if I did not die, um, perhaps I would manage to overcome the infection. Um, perhaps being diabetic then, if I could heal, 
perhaps. There are so many perhaps, perhaps. against me. But to cut the long story short, here I am. <laughs> here I am. Jesus giving him did praise. it. He yes. did it. He did it. I'm so happy for you. I'm happy. That God hasn't given up on us. You know, sometimes you just feel, okay, with everything that has happened, okay, maybe he's just forgotten me, but he's still there. He's not, he's not, he's not going anywhere. He's still there. Even in this still, the sil that silence where you feel it's like he, nobody's there. He's still there. And in the midst of all this, you're a strong woman. No, you still I went have, back to a second I, I album. Have, I have a strong God. <laughs> yeah, have you a have a strong God. God. You went yes. back to the studio for another work. He, he, as soon as that surgery, I was healing. He was telling me, okay, it's time for, to do a concert. I was like, but Lord, he said, no, 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 no. That's why I saved you because I need you to do my job. All I wanted to do then was just make money and support the gospel, not be involved like, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> you wouldn't catch me dancing or doing a video like, huh? Meanwhile, I grew up in church. I'm, I'm a Christian really in it, but I got to a point. I just wanted to support. I didn't want to, but. I, I, I had no choice. So um, here I am, testifying, I declare, I testify, my God is an awesome God. What was going through your mind when you wrote, I, It's You I Choose? I love that song so much. It's you, I, I choose. choose. You know the song. <laughs> what was going through your mind at that time when you were writing those lyrics? You know, um, when, when Jesus calls us, so many things, so many distractions. We forget our first calling when he says, follow me, as I said earlier. And there are many voices, confusion everywhere. And you have a choice to follow this, 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 this. There are many paths now and many philosophies and many ideologies. And um, that's not for me and that's not the truth. The truth is Jesus and my choice forever will be always and ever. Jesus. Are you using your testimony and your music to impact lives? With all you've put together, how are you using to impact lives? That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> music is one of the um, beautiful things God created. And um, Satan was um, a tool for worship before God until he became Satan. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine there was actually war in heaven. So worship is a powerful tool. So um, I share my testimony. I'm a speaker and um, I'm his minister. And I realized that music is a channel. Music is a powerful channel. It can be used for good or bad. You hear someone, 
they sing and people start crying. You hear some other person, they sing and they want to go crazy and then they smash their guitars or they tear their clothes or they start taking drugs or doing stuff because there is power in music. It's, it's a channel. I've decided to use this channel as well as other channels to glorify God. This is what it's about. And um, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. Now, Amy, this is your moment. This is where you get to pray for someone. Someone out there or a lot of people right now are watching you and they've heard your testimony and they may be going through maybe something similar. Either it may not be as much as what you've gone through and someone needs hope, someone needs reassurance, someone needs to be strengthened. Can you pray with someone today? Can you strengthen someone Amen. with the same strength the Lord strengthened you, the same way he kept you through? Can you minister to somebody today? Our God is an awesome God. He might be going through stuff and it looks as if it would never end. That's a lie of the devil. God loves you. Not just does he love you, but he has the power to deliver and to help you and save you. All you have to do is you put your trust in him and he's there because he really loves you. Amen. He loves you. Okay, let's do this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for everything. We come before your throne and we give you worship. We give you praise. For everyone listening to my voice and watching this program and looking for a miracle, we ask in the name of Jesus that they receive their miracles Amen. right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you because we ask your word says that if we say to the mountains, be thou removed and be cast into the sea without doubting, it must, it shall be done. Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise because we know it is done. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank amen. you so much, Amy. I don't want you to go. <laughs> thank you so much for taking our time to share your testimony with thank someone you. today. Someone's life is different today. Amen. Someone's life is strengthened. Amen. Someone is encouraged. Someone, someone's healing has already started. Amen. Thank you so much for being a blessing. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Are these props or do we celebrate Jesus? Uh, okay, we could celebrate Jesus. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> celebrate <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, I believe someone's course of destiny has been redirected and someone is healed today. And someone has drawn strength from Amy's testimony. That's what Heart to Heart does. We draw strength from the experiences of people who come on the program. If you love the stories on Heart to Heart, you can get in touch with us on Heart to Heart at cbnnigeria.org and we'll be so glad to hear from you. Till I come your way next time, here's a beautiful song by Amy.
Leave the master's hands. Leave the master's feet. Leave the master's heart. See the love in the eyes. Leave the master's hands. Leave the master's feet. Leave the master's heart.